Hi everyone, I fashionista, I my lovely people. Today I will be cutting um six pieces gown. You can use the same method to cut your skirts, you can use it to cut your gown also. I love your comments on the illustration on how to cut a, a eight pieces skirt. So this is eight piece, uh, six pieces gown. So what I mean by gown is that it has an half cut from the waist measurement. So we are cutting the down part of a six pieces gown. So you can use the same method to cut your eight pieces. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Please knock that subscribe button. It's very important. It's just for you to get notified when I drop new videos and comment so that we know what else I'll be making for you. So let's get started now. For you to cut a six pieces gown, the measurements required, you need your um, length, the length of your gown. The length of the gown we are working on, we are working on length 58. So you minus the half length of the, you, have, you minus the half length of this measurement from the normal length. You need your full length, which is the full gown measurement. You need your waist measurement. You need your hip measurement. So the full length of this gown is 58 and the half length is what? 16. So we minus 16 from 58 is give us 42. So plus the half inch we are going to use to join this. We can make it 58.5. That's 58 and a half. So as I said in my other video, okay, I don't know whether I've dropped that shot. So if you want to cut a lace, make sure you don't cut it. You don't stop your measurement at the edge here. Make sure you stop it at where the edge starts from here. You don't stop it. Even if the edges of your clothes is longer than this, don't make that mistake. So now our half length is 16. You minus that 16 inches from your normal measurement. So this is the 16. You put it on top here. Then you take it to measure 58. So we are using 58 and a half. So, for you to fold the wideness of your pieces, I normally use 12 inches. It is not that it's constant, but I love using 12 inches because it makes the wideness, the down of my clothes wider. You can even make it more than um, 12 inches. But I love using 12. You can use 9. You can use um, 10 inches. But the normal length measurement is using 12 inches for the wideness of the down. And when I was explaining my um, eight pieces skirts, I make sure you using your bust pan to calculate your cutting. So now the bust pan of this person is seven plus half inches to join it. That makes it four. So I will mark that four downward then i have to stop at the knee length measurements your knee length measurements you can measure if you like but i love uh, to give you the correct answer to you calculate your knee length measurements so the knee length measurements for an average person is what 34. your knee length should be around 34 35 36 that's okay for a top person you use 36 for an average person you use 34 inches for this person the person i'm, I'm using this uh, measurements for our hip is 38 inches, so our average knee length, our knee length is what 34 inches. If you make your knee length go down too much, you can you will find out that after cutting that cloth, after finishing sewing it, the person won't be able to walk freely to come down to the knee. So the style won't even come out. So your knee length should be at around the upper part of your um upper knee measurement. That's the way you drop your half length up. You drop your half length up, then you get your knee length measurement. So this is the length of the flare, as in the wideness of the pieces. So now you mark your four inches. I've explained how I got the four inches. It is gotten through your bust pan. So if you cut the upper part now, it will match each other. So you use four inches. Four inches four inches four inches 
please don't mind my space this is the back of my shop so that's what this is what i have that i'm managing please thank you don't mind the noise look at the content so from here now you will take your ruling tape and draw it down you see you see the way it is this is the center part of it so let's cut and see what it looks like i told you i measured 12 here you don't need to start calculating if you use this method you will love it and your cutting will come out very well oh, yeah, so if you like you can reduce this by half inch that is if you like but with this cutting there's nothing like you don't need to remove but if you like oh, you can reduce but i like reducing everything i want to reduce at the side and at the center back you cut at the back of your chalk because if you cut inside your chalk it will reduce the measurement so after getting it you can see this is your center See what it looks like the person that owns this coat is using this for so the person using this coat is using it for an engagement you can see the way it's very long even if she's putting on high heel it will still balance so her normal length is 56 but it's because she's using it for a party and occasion that's why i made it 58 inches so that it will flow very well on the floor so now after that you take the clothes See the way I want to place it. If you if you make use of all these lines, you've spoiled the clues already. So it's better you do it sideways. You cut here, cut here. You divert it um, on both sides. So now I want to cut the side. After I've cut in the center, what I do is I cut the side. So this is how you calculate the side of your pieces. So... You drop your 16 inches, which is your half length, you drop it up. Your hip line is 24. Your hip line, normal, normal for an average person, your hip line should be 24, 20, uh, 24. But Okpoju should be 26. That means for that 26, your hip, you, must, you must be a tall person. And again, you must have a big hip. For an average person, the hip line should be 24. If you make your hip line, whether 20, 20, 22, you will see some gown after sewing it. It will have some puffy uh, thing here. It will be puffy at the side here. Like, whereas your hip is down here. So you don't use your hip line to be up. Your hip line should be around 24. But a straight skirt or a straight gown, your hip line too should be 24. But if you are cutting a straight skirt, or uh, yes, straight skirt, it should be around 18. Assuming I'm cutting this as a skirt now. So the, the hip line of this person is 8 inches. See, I don't even know it to be the same. Thing. It is 8 inches. Likewise, the knee length will be 18 inches. So I, I hope you should understand that better because I have a video on that too. So now we'll drop the half length here, which is 16, and make the hip line here. So on top of this hip line, we'll measure our hip measurements, which, and again, this is our knee length measurements. On top of this knee length, we'll measure our hip uh, our knee curve measurement so now we measure the waist our waist is what 28 our waist is 30 so here yeah. you know what we remove here is what four inches this is four inches so minus half inches that you are going to use to join it it becomes what um three and a half inches so you drop your three and a half inches here are you seeing it? Then you make this is seven and a half for the waist, two inches for the seam allowance. Let me come again. What is here is what four inches. So you bring it here. You know, your bust pan is what seven. When we join this to the other side, it becomes seven, it becomes seven. So this becomes three and a half. You drop your three and a half here. Let me explain it better. When you widen this now, it becomes eight inches like this. When we join half here, half here, it becomes seven. So let's put it. Seven divided by two is three and a half. So that's how I got the three and a half. So you, you put your three and a half here. 
then you take your waist measurement which is seven and a half then you put two inches seam allowance on top of your hip you measure your hip a hip is 38 30 divided by four is what nine and a half so you put the same three and a half here a hip is what nine and a half you also put two inches seam allowance then you join these two together hope you are seeing me if you don't get it very well when you watch it at first please repeat the video so that you can so for you to get your knee curve measurements you minus four inches from your actual hip measurements for you to get your knee curve minus four inches from your hip measurements now this hip is 38 if you minus four from 38 it gives you what 34 you what 8.5 if you divide 34 34 divided by 4 it gives you what 8.5 8.5 so well I said the hip is what nine and a half nine and a half plus two likewise the knee curve is what eight and a half how I got the eight and a half is I minus one inches from the hip measurement to get my knee curve. Then you add one and a half. If you notice, I started adding two inches here, two inches here, but I added one and a half here. Why I added one and a half is that, you see, our knee measurements cannot be measured. And you sh when you are sewing your clothes, your knee measurement should be a shapey something that it must go inside a little, very, even very well self. But it's not that in a way that you won't be working comfortably. That is why you have to reduce four inches from your knee measurement from your hip to get your knee curve so now from this now you take sorry for the chalk i'm using but i'm very sure you are seeing clearly you take it up so this is three and a half you get eight and a half which is 8.5 which is 34 divided by four which gives you 8.5 the hip is 38 30 divided by four we give you um nine nine point five so you minus one inches from that nine point five, it gives you eight and a half, or thirty eight uh, divided by four, which gives you what thirty four. So it's the same thing. So I'm just repeating so that you can get it better. Then you now add one and a half inches here, then you curve it up. So I hope that I hope you are very clear with that. So let's cut. I only cut the side. So look, watch me while I cut. Remember to always cut at the back of your chop. So, are you seeing it? So, you cut this. If you follow this step of cutting pieces, watch my video. I'll drop the link on the description box below so that you understand that also. I've dropped, it, I've dropped the video on how to cut eight pieces so you take this like this you know when i wanted to measure the center front the wideness of the center front when i wanted to measure the um wideness of the center front i used 24. same thing if you, if you want to measure this wideness too to make the clothes very wide you can also use 24 or more than that so you place it this way you place it this way Let's see. This can reduce it. You can make it 20, you can make it 24. Anyhow you like it. Anyhow you like it. You can reduce it. But if you cut your pieces this way, you will love the outcome. Sincerely speaking. You will really love the outcome. So now, you take it like this. So now, you use this, this one. Are you seeing the shape? See the nice shape? You use this to cut four. You know our pieces, we have four sides. One, one, two, three, four. So we are cutting three more of this, make it four. Then after we cut the center, there's a way I do cut my center too. So I would like you to continue watching. Yeah. I've cut the two and I want to uh, put this uh, to your notice that when you are cutting make sure you know what you are cutting keep the one you've cut aside now I've cut the center 
you put it aside. You cut the side, you put it aside. You use one side that you cut, the first side you cut, to so cut the other one. It makes two. From these two now, you take one so that you won't do mistake. Because pieces waste a lot of clothes. If you do mistake, you have to cut it again. There's no adjustment. So now, assuming you are managing three years to cut it, then it's now give you, as in you made a mistake while cutting it. <laughs> don't put yourself into trouble. So I don't pray you'll be buying clothes for customers. So when you want to place it, you place the other one too. So this is the third one I'm cutting. You take one from it and use this last one to cut the other side too. So you can see the way I'm manipulating now, the way I'm managing the material. So, so this is the last one we are cutting now. The fourth side. So you cut it. You cut it out. Ah. You cut it out this way. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Please. Eh? Now the subscribe button. It is free. Nobody is collecting money for you. They are not removing from your data. It is free. It's just for you to encourage me so that I can do better. Hmm? I beg you, Joe. I beg you, Joe. I test you. If you hear Yoruba, I'm a Yoruba girl. Please knock the subscribe button. If you ever may click on subscribe buttons here. So this is this is the side. This is the two side. It makes four. Four side. Then now we'll call the center. You can see it. It's four. One, two, three, four. So this is center. See what it looks like. Then you join it with half inch. Half inch. So I will show you how to put lining into it. I'm using um door face to put lining into it. So let's cut the center back. There's a way I do cut my center back. Just imagine after cutting this, look at how full it is. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. So imagine how full it is. You just don't cut the center and put zip and put giant zip allowance alone. See the way I cut my center back. I would love you to watch the way I cut the center back too. It may be different from yours. I don't know. Just watch. All right. So now you place your clothes using the widest side too, the way I did all before. You put your center back, your center front. You fold it into two this way this way don't mind my street though. don't mind the noise coming i'm sorry just let me manage what i have for now so now you place it this way you place it you move it a little so as to manage your clothes then from this place now from your knee measurements you mark your knee measurements so from your knee measurements you take one inch from your waist, you take one and a half. That one and a half, you take it down. You take it down. The ruling tape. You mark it up to the waist. So from here, you widen it up. You can widen your down hop by seven inches. It's just like you attaching a tail to your clothes, but this one is a direct tail. You can attach it by seven inches. You can use nine. You can use ten. Well, because this one is a wedding gown, as in, sorry, an engagement clothes, I want it to be very wide, so I'm using ten inches. Yeah. So this is a ten inches. Or you can also use nine. Anyone you are okay with. So let's use nine so that it will stop here. Let's use nine. Nine inches. Or 10 inches anyhow so let's cut this out now we will first cut the side don't forget your zip allowance and don't forget to always cut at the back of your chalk so why i make that one one inches i want it to go in a little bit i want it to have a little kind of shape there after so so, even if you don't want to use one inch, you can even go in by half inch. 
because you don't need you don't have anything to do with that needle the needle doesn't need zip you're only putting zip at the upper part here so now you take this like this you place it this way you can see you see that thing not the knife so so that you make a mistake make sure you take your clothes like this to notch your center front so you know where you are using for the zip far side and the one you are using for the side so this is it you cut another one of these to make two So, I hope you are seeing it. So, I'm cutting this. The center back has to be two pieces. So, if you calculate the back now, it will be eight pieces in the front, in the back, white, um, uh, six pieces in the back, which means four years. Three years, that's seven. Two. We've come to the end of the cutting of the lace now i will show you how you can cut your lining some people normally use half lining which i don't really like i like to put my lining very full so i'm using doll face or you call it satin doll satin to cut my lining so this is the center back don't forget to notch it too that you won't make a mistake so hope you understand so let me show you how to cut the line so i like checking the remaining one after cutting it so the yards that was here before was four uh four inches and 30 inches four yards sorry <laughs> four yards and 30 inches so now let's calculate it this one Two, are you seeing it? So, this is two and a half. That means <laughs> what we use is not even up to two and a half yards. So, let's just say we use two and a half yards to cut it. I will show you what it looks like after sewing it. But let me show you how to put to cut the lining on it. So, we use, let's say, you if you want to cut six pieces, skirt, or a gown, you are going to use two. And a half years to cut. <laughs> don't tell that. Don't tell your customer the secret too, so that the customer will not bring three years for skirt and blouse. <laughs> so you can use two and a half to manage and to cut it very well. So to put your lining. All right, all right, all right. See the way I place the lining. You can see. You can see what I leave down because you know some edges are longer than this. But if you see this edge is very small. So I want the lining to reach down. So I don't want it to I want it to plump. Plump together as in Koba Ramodogba. Almost the same length. So it's it's so it's a full um uh, pieces lining. And I'm using the full line, lining for it. So the, you can see I fold it this way. If I want to cut the other two others, you can see this one now is two. This one too is two. This is the center back and this is the um side two of the side so i'm going to place this again and cut the front and the two of the side so i hope you understand the way i fold it okay let me just measure what i folded into two so i folded 24 okay 25 let's just say 25 inches into two that makes 50. so you can use that to calculate how many years of lining you will be using 
because the lining I folded here is much. You know, I'm selling certain tailoring material. So I just took from what I have in shop and I folded it. It's much there. So this is the way you place the the last two. So this is the center and this is the side, the two sides. So I hope with this you are very okay as in you understand it better. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I'm begging you, please. I will really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. So I'll cut this and that is the end of the cutting of an uh, eight pieces um, gown. You can make it as a skirt also the way I cut it and I make use of um, six years. Oh, sorry. Five years of material, but out of the five years, I cut out two and a half years for the pieces. So then I'll use the remaining one for the upper part of the clothes. So the secret to this cutting, don't tell your customer, don't let your customer six pieces, they fair run here. Two and a half matto. <laughs> it is risky. Just tell them you make use of three years because some customer might bring three years and tell you that they want to use it to sew skirts and blouse. So I hope you love it. I really need that thumbs up. It will really make me know that you really get the cutting. My explanation was really clear to you and I will really appreciate by replying to your comments. Thank you so, 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 so much. And share, tell people about my channel. I also appreciate that. Thanks so much and God bless. What's it song? Yes, this is how it looks like after sewing. You can see. You can see it from my body. See. I told you the length of the gown is 56, but I use 58 because she's using it for engagement. So let's measure what the down, the total of the down is. You know, the center was 12, which is 24. So let's see. So this is the foot tape, let's say this is 60, that's 67 and a half, let's just approximate it as 68. So this, the front is 68, then the back, see the back, you know I added till to the center, so this is the way the back is, so let's measure the back also. And see how wide it is and we use just two and a half yards to cut this just two and a half yards the 60 so that's a 60 plus 26 that's 86 86 plus 67 oh calculation that's 140 or 150 something sharp. So that's it. You can see the finishing. See the back. See how it looks like. So you open press this. You take it to your um, uh, table and iron. You open press. You wet it and open press it. See how it looks like. See why I like putting full lining. See the front too. So I hope you like it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye.